and we're gonna jump in too with our music dance. Should we do because we're doing music now in between? Is it snapping? It's time for brew news. Who's brew news? <laughs> Is Remy gonna come running? She might. She might. Brew she might. news. <laughs> Uh, this segment is dedicated to bringing you the latest in craft beer news, focusing on local highlights and industry-wide trends. We have hand-picked, hand -picked. plucked them out of the internet, and uh, they're focusing on local highlights here to the Denver area specifically and beyond, not just in Colorado either, but also the most buzzworthy articles of the mm -hmm. past week, ensuring that you stay informed and engage with what's happening in the world of craft beer. Yes, yes, yes. So... Fun fact about our NA options. There's been lots of buzz about the different ones coming up. Uh, and one of them that had lots and lots of jokes available surrounding it was White Claw. But what we want to emphasize in here is what they did special, allegedly, is they recreated the alcohol taste. So it's mm. not just expensive seltzer water. But we've got a surprise because we... Pick spent, some up. I spent twenty dollars <laughs> on some seltzer water that might taste like alcohol, mm. and we're gonna let you know. We also may have done it a disservice by having the heater on back here. <laughs> if it has any extra cheers. boozy taste to it, cheers. cheers. Um, or, I went with black cherry. Yeah, I've got, got the got mango, mango. And, and I I I, I joke on the white claws, but I do drink them at volleyball. It yeah. does kind of have the yeah. little zing at the end. Yeah. It's like sweeter though. I also did myself a disservice by drinking a double dry hop citra hop water. <laughs> we did not flight it's well. It's very, very, that one. This is good. Um, Let me try yours. Um, so it does taste like a white claw. I've yeah. been drinking a lot of uh, the hop water options with like, like we talked about last week, like the lime, mango, blood orange. Um, this definitely has a different flavor to it, where those definitely come across as just like the flavored seltzer waters. This, this I would say mm -hmm. it has that, and maybe it's the electrolytes that it's give that off. little zing on the end. Yeah, it, does, it tastes like it has booze in it. It tastes like a white claw. It doesn't taste like seltzer water. It tastes yep, like a white claw. and I don't like mango white claws and still don't like it uh, without the alcohol. Sure. I, I do, I'm digging that black cherry. I like this one. Um, and that's why I needed two coasters today. They, uh, oh, yeah, fair. There you go. Uh, they could be colder. They have been sitting down here. And because, as we discussed, it's frigid outside, there is a heater on. Yeah. Um, so they could be colder. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, like I, I was a little hesitant to jump into us. I mean, one, I just really don't care when people talk about if they like something or not. Because all of our palettes are different. So, like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> um, but I also drink White Claws at least once a week because I drink them at volleyball. Yep. Um, yep, yep, yep. And it's, I don't know if I would know the difference. Um, I would notice uh, the more hydrating effect and not the dehydrating effect. I feel like the sugar lingers a little bit longer on my tongue. Is that what it is? So it's definitely, uh, definitely the sweet is lingering, but um, yeah. I like the can. Yeah, overall. Refined they're pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I, I, think mean, that, I think it tastes just like a White Claw. Yeah, it tastes pretty close to like a White Claw. So, there you go. They did make it taste like there's alcohol in it. I think so. I think so. It definitely doesn't taste like a seltzer. No. It has that extra little zing. So they brought down like a, a LaCroix or something. Mm, but it definitely side. doesn't have the carbonation to match a LaCroix. Um, mm -mm. I think that's lacking too. But I need to try it cold a, again. A lower usually they're really cold. carbonation. So anyways, there you have it. We did it. White Claw, not just expensive seltzer water. <laughs> but also kind of just they expensive seltzer water. They did do something unique, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Alright, so, okay, I guess I drew the text straw, and I'm happy about that when it comes to our brew news. Okay. Uh, there is a new home brewing machine that oh, was showcased at CES this year, the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. If you've never gone... So go. much fun. It's a blast. We used to go every uh, year. Every year. Well, we went um, four years in a row. Yeah, went a lot of years. And then the last year, 
Go ahead. It was 2020 <laughs> that yeah. we went. So it's in January <laughs> every year. Definitely came back with some COVID. The, well, we're not sure. We never tested because we didn't know it was a thing yet, right? Because it was that's, January. That's fair. I was very sick, though. And so, like, but you, like, go to conferences and you come back with the conference guck. Like, that's pretty common. You're oh, around yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. But, like, we go. We've gone a lot of times. We, we are part of a tech company, startup, a tech startup as well. Um, and so we go and we check out all the new shit that's going on and it's a ton of fun. Uh, and it's just a great experience It's a blast. and it's like crammed pack, like insanely full. Like you can't get on the, do they call it tarmac? What's the shuttle in Vegas? Uh, the train MX. Yeah. The train, they have some name for it, whatever it is. You like, it's like, you can sometimes wait 20, 30 minutes to get on there and people are just crammed. Yeah. 2020 we get in and it is nobody, nobody. <laughs> like you get on these trains and there's like 15 other people usually you're just crowded and we're just like this is really weird like tech isn't dying out that much why is it so dead here it, the yeah. conference rooms you could walk around you can get to any of the exhibits exhibits and just stroll in most of the big companies didn't even show up yeah and we're just like yeah. what is going on so they knew before we knew that covid was a thing yeah um Mostly because they were all sick already. But <laughs> companies had shut it down. Yeah, I still can't think of. But the, all their stuff the was there. Name and it's not Amtrak, but yeah, yeah, all their stuff was there. Was just, some people did show up, or it was just boxes, unopened boxes. Yeah, because like they shipped. they'd already yeah. shipped it, and they like the cost to unship it or store it somewhere wasn't worth it. So they just shipped all of their stuff, and then it just sat on the floor of yeah. these big conference centers. Mm -hmm. It was wild. It was, and then yeah, like you know, so this is January, and then lo and behold, March arrives and we're like hoo hoo we now understand why nobody was yeah. there yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. anyways yes, it's a great time would recommend it's, going yeah kind of forgot because we're like so deep into into the podcast and mustard later that kind of forgot about it and then the article started showing up and i was like i wanted why to didn't go. we go uh you know life yeah, and we didn't even have a discussion about it. You know, I kept reading it in my email, and it's yeah. like, you better sign up. You better yeah, sign like up. we would have rallied and went. We yeah, need, we need it's, a it's Vegas. A good time. We need a Vegas friend trip. One hundred percent. Yeah, we do. I do appreciate a good Vegas. Any trip. Uh, Las Vegas breweries that want us to record, I will check a bag for that, and I hate checking bags <laughs> like a lot. We would need all of our equipment. Yeah. We just ship it there too. That's fair. Yeah. Dave. Yeah. Ship it to Dave. Yeah. Dave's or Patty. Yeah. Continue. Anyway, uh, anyway, reeling it back in. So, reeling it back in. That's so this, a fun story. So this year, uh, it's a great story, and do recommend going. Uh, so this new home brewing machine is called Exo Brew. Uh, details about it in the description. So it's designed to make beer brewing accessible, more accessible for beginners. So it's meant to simplify the brewing process that aims at those who uh, find traditional home brewing maybe a little daunting, not up their alley. Uh, so th maybe they, they're looking for more of that easy button, right? Uh, so it offers a user-friendly approach. It, um, it basically is a super smart home brew system. So it's all, it's it, automated. It, yeah, well, all you have to do is like drop in the ingredients. Yeah, it's automated. And there's an app and it takes care of the rest. Yeah. So it's basically like... It takes the learning curve out of it, yeah. which is super sweet because it's automated. And you it drop like, in your water, you drop in your your wheat, your yeast, yeah. grains, grains, pops, whatever if you, you want them all. You could do gluten free, right? And so, whatever you want in there, and it's just like cool. I'll take care of the rest. It's going to be in a timer. If you need to do anything, I'll notify you to do that. I'm going to monitor the temperature. Like yeah. you said, it's all it's all there. Um, what what's the downside to it? Well, just like every piece of uh, smart tech there's a subscription model that comes with it so if you want to do anything that's custom or if you want additional yeah. recipes outside of what they're already offering you're yeah. gonna have to pay for it. but it wasn't crazy it was only like, it was like bucks nine bucks yeah, it wasn't yeah. much no but. so it's it, you're probably just paying for like a like a cellular fee or something yeah maybe well probably not cellular but i was thinking of another device sorry Go yeah. ahead. nine dollars <laughs> a month yeah probably just a subscription to the yeah. all yeah. the recipes yeah. right yeah. someone's someone's got to pay all those people giving you recipes yeah, yeah, uh yeah, yeah. but the the price tag for the device itself was hefty yeah. especially for like a new home brewer which i i hate i hate to say this, but i mean we've brought it before like i've never been that big into like the home brewing i, would probably get it. I kind of am tempted about it because we have unsuccessfully <laughs> Trade Again, da daunting is the right word for it. Is it's just like you set reminders and you're like, eh, I'll get to it tomorrow. Like, I would love to be like having our own beer 
and I think it'd be a lot of fun. It's just we just don't have the time to like give it the love, That's effort, and attention that like it needs. So yeah. I, I think there's just prioritizing it. Yeah, well, you know, people are busy. Yeah. I'm busy. How are you talking about? Or out of town. I'm not not busy. Again, yeah. it's always surprising that we made it, and we're so happy that we made it here today. Um, so I've been looking at espresso machines a lot over the last. Missing the espresso machine. Well, I'm not, but Michelle is, and I just want my coffee machine right. But so we've had some issues with our plumbing. It's a brand new house, well, brand new to us, and drains are backing up, or water pipes are breaking. It's just been, it's been kind of miserable. Yeah, but also, real. like we get by. But um, so you can't put your coffee too grains. Kind of fun. <laughs> you can't put your coffee grain. Ground. Down the sink. Browns down the sink. There it is. So there's traps set up everywhere. And it's like, well, I might as well just get rid of this French press. And I've been using a French press for a very long time. It's like my favorite way to drink coffee. Mm. And so it was like, okay, I'm looking at combo coffee maker espresso machines. And I'm looking at this XO Brew article. And I'm like, okay, I'm on board as I'm shopping and reading reviews for these espresso machines and going, okay, I could kind of get into the barista world. I like a latte every now and then, but honestly, hands down, I'm probably just going to drink my coffee black. So it's probably, for me, most cost-effective just to buy the $20 black and decker. You know what I mean? Yeah. You pay for the filters, you pay for the grounds, you call it a day. Yeah. That being said. You're not a craft connoisseur of your coffee. I do appreciate it, but again, when you're talking about time, I don't I don't tend to think it's worth it to put the time into making myself a cappuccino when really I just want to slam black coffee all day and get a good buzz going on to get my work done. <laughs> if so there's one thing in the world I am addicted to, it very much is caffeine and coffee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm like the opposite. Yeah, in, in my two-week sobriety here. Uh, but... That being said, I think it's super cool. I do think with the reminders, if you are home bringing it home, I'm sure the people that are already doing it, they have those reminders set up, you know, and it's just making sure that that's a priority. So whether you're home bringing or you want to be a barista at home, like the machines are out there and they're getting smarter as we, yeah. as we go on. Yeah, yeah. yeah it seemed it seems pretty cool. Uh, there was like a fun, I don't know the exact quoting stories on it, but basically they're not supposed to be pushing out beer that's like illegal mm. for the event because you can't like serve alcohol um, you can walk around with a bloody mary but you can't but you, but you get it. it from the bar some right? of them do serve it though remember like we would walk up and they were mixing i have seen a mixed drink somebody was giving away alcohol one year i'm pretty sure that was sitting on the little robot they give they give it they can i think they can give away alcohol that's they different than serving it, exactly it's a whole difference of opening uh, the container uh, well, this technically they didn't open the container either, I guess. They just poured it right out into a glass. But anyways, and there's somebody a... somebody grabbed it. Yeah, and lots of people were drinking <laughs> it. And so the article I saw, they were like, oh, I got the last beer from this machine before CES shut it down. The CES police shut it down. That's so I didn't hear if it was any good. But I, I, mean, I, I did read the article. It's supposed to be pretty decent and give you a lot better variety of different styles that maybe are more complex that you wouldn't get into as like your first two three yeah. times brewing yeah. and so it really just kind of removes the learning curve and love or hate it for it like i think it's cool i think it's cool i do, I do. i'm all about yeah. like again simplify it make it as elementary and basic as possible as you can and then if you really want to get passionate and go out on your own yeah. Then, then you probably would so, because you're like, okay, I can get to that point yeah. because I've seen the ease of it. Yeah. So I guess like an example case I would put up as an as an example uh, <laughs> would example. be example uh, would be like I like to buy sometimes some of like you're going out to eat or like I just bought these little uh, uh, Morning Star like little egg vegan sausage like oh, bites yeah. yep. and. I'm not going to order those. I'm going to buy those regularly because they're so wasteful and they're in the plastic and they're not that good. But what it does is it helps me like understand what's in there and start concocting exactly. my own processes. Exactly. And I love going out to eat to have that same thing of being like, oh, well, I can make this and this is how I would make it. Blah, blah, blah. And it's expanding my palate and my experiences. Uh, but they're going to be like, OK, so that's kind of what I'm assuming that this thing will do is it'll it's meant to be better than just OK. But like the odds are like if you want to experiment, what a way it's such a lower friction to be like, hey, let's have this thing make it. Hey, I really like these aspects, but now I can go start really tweaking my recipes and, and do it on your own. The point in case, right? They it's like want big breweries to... having like little like two or five barrel systems. Yeah, and we'll, <laughs> we'll get into that later too, right? When we get into experimental beers. Uh, but 
that was case in point, right? This is an introductory way to reach a wider audience. Yep. Boom. They did it. Yeah. Right? So a little I'm in. expensive, but they're going to try it and maybe try and do it on their own after that. So yep. I, I dig it. I'm yeah, about it. I think it's a good way. No, I don't hate it. I get, I get how it's... Robots, like, man. Robots. Robots. Yeah, maybe not the best for the whole craft beer space if people can just pump out their own. But yeah. in theory, again, that means you just have people to have a more unique experience. And they've had an oven and stove for a really long fucking time. Because right. they want an experience. Sorry, a really long time. All about the experience. Yeah, exactly. Experience. Yeah. All right. Experience. Anyways, all right. On to the next topic. And this one is a little bit more controversial. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's also it, we're. It's a new addition to an older story. I guess would be a good way to put it. So yeah. uh, according to BBC News, uh, highlights the craft beer industry giant BrewDog, craft beer giant BrewDog, <laughs> uh, abandons uh, real living wages for employees. Uh, shifting away from his previous commitment of paying its employees a real living wage set to increase to 13.5 pounds this year, back to the UK's national minimum wage, which is around 12, um, 12 pounds of uh, an hourly, an hour for the working in London. Uh, the wage is less for those working outside of London. Um, it's viewed as a significant step backwards, especially for what uh, was viewed as the cost of living, in a cost of living crisis. Um, the change highlights the challenges balanced between the company profile, fair employee compensation, particularly in comparison to the ongoing struggle for adequate wages in the U.S. service industry. Uh, the decision contrasts its previous commitment to better wages, uh, points out a complex business, uh, complexities businesses face in maintaining ethical labor practices while maintaining financial pressures. Mm. Tough one. It's a, a lot. It's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. And yeah, it's this stuff. So now whether you're aware or not, that's where we're bringing back in some of the old news and why it's relevant. Um, they have a laundry list of controversies uh, BrewDog does associated with its brand, even outside of the employee compensation we just discussed about. Uh, in June of 21, there was an open letter um, published by, uh, it was like one letter, but a hundred different former employees signed it, uh, cited a culture of fear in uh, personality. Mm. A fear in personality? Culture of personality. Oh. Oh. I don't get it. So I did it's just it. fear. Okay. It's fear. They didn't like it. It was a shitty culture. And uh, Sierra has since endorsed the publication, um, disputed his comments, and even stated that he'd be putting 5% of his stake of ownership in the company into an employee ownership trust to help build a better culture within the company. Um, so why this is getting brought back up again uh, is really going to be just kind of like wrapping that back into uh, the culture that you make and the experiences you're trying to bring in. And are you maintaining those? Are you of publicly facing saying that you're doing these things and not and that's a lot of what came up in this letter yeah uh and so uh, though where, where i struggle a bit in this is without the letter just knowing the story like yeah a lot of companies they're, they're struggling they're either having to put like percentages on for fair living on your bill mm-hmm. to help pay for this and now you have customers that are like everything's so expensive mm-hmm. um and they did for almost 10 years successfully offer this, this yep, living wage. 2015. So, I mean, they, they, they did a, I would say, above a good old college try on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but what gets hard on this is when they have a company culture of publicly stating they're doing things, but then not actually following through with it, kind of it just comes as not a shock, I guess is for lack of better words, that people are seeing it as a, yeah, well, of course, they're doing that. They've done that with all these other things that they've been a part of or promises that they've made. Uh, and you brought up that you read in there that the CEO, like the 5%, and you're like, hey, that's like pretty cool. But it's ownership stakes. And what did you say? Like the lawyers are saying it might take eight years to actually implement. Like yeah. most people aren't still working, especially at like the like front of the house jobs for eight years, especially in a culture that's kind of shitty. Like, yeah. so who's actually going to see it? Like who, who even knows at that point? So the fact that it's not salary and it's the the shares kind of makes me think that it was like this the shares that get dispersed in salaries right because you get paid dividends uh and and so if for the salaried employees they would be getting um however the company does it probably yearly dividends that get put onto their salaries um but it takes a while to put that paperwork into place uh so they said like up to eight years yeah um and and for for 
for me, like, it was a little shocking to read this, right? Um, shocking and not, right? Because it's, it's certain people's perspectives on what's happening behind the scenes, right? And then there's the public facing image that um, people get to see on yep. a day-to-day -day basis, yep. you know? And BrewDog mm -hmm. is one of those, uh, one of those companies that you got to give credit where credit is due and you know they are a big reason why the craft right craft beer is where it, it is today you yeah. know uh, they have a long reaching arm and you know it what started out as a big passion to get um you know craft beers out there outside of the traditional sense of brewing so you you know you gotta give that credit and um uh, so, so it's hard to read things like this, this open letter yeah. that uh, the employees put out on the internet. And, and, you know, this, again, this is over two years old that this came out and it's getting brought back up again because now they're um, on right. the contrary, right? They're lowering their wages because they say they netted like a $24 million loss. And yeah. so they got to cut costs somewhere. And so like maybe like if if we saw the whole budget you would assume like cutting your employee wages is one of the last costs yeah. that you would be cutting and we don't and we don't know that, you just right? don't know yeah you was just that don't the know. first thing they cut then yeah i think was it, it really was it points like you points back to this shitty culture but was so. it the last i don't know like uh so so i guess like we're trying to approach this and like there's a lot of emotion around this story mm -hmm. and and it's as you said like they're this iconic brewery that paved the way and open so many doors and then it's kind of like it's like that like you don't want to meet your idol kind of statement because then they just kind of like shit Damn, on you and you're like suck. man they suck uh and that's well, kind of how, sure, how it feels and that's how it feels and you know we also talked about that's 100 breweries out of how many thousands that they've had but still employees. like 100 or yeah. sorry, employees there's still that's a lot of uh a lot of people and and I, it's hard to not at least believe some of it's true when it's kind of a cultural, there's a lot of cultural issues that are common amongst a lot of other breweries. Um, and so you're kind of like, yeah, well, I'm sure that is part of it. Uh, I would love and, to and like, just, have just they like a, ramped it up because I was really excited to go to the Denver one. Yeah. And to give a little bit more context, basically this letter sums up and basically the idea for BrewDog was to grow at all costs necessary to which they grew and they've done, yep. they've been really successful, but it basically ends with, they grew at uh, whatever costs necessary on the back of, you know, other people's dreams, you know? So yep. that's a really, and I'm paraphrasing, right? But it, it's a really hard sentence to swallow when you go, what prevails? Is it is it the good in people or is it power and greed yep. that um, causes people to prevail but it, it, we just don't know the full story but it it, do, it does hit the heart a little bit yeah. um i was also excited to go and um be supportive and check out something that's been around for a really long time yeah. and it's a hell of a lot iconic. easier to drive to rhino than it is to get to scotland so <laughs> but, that was much uh, fun though sorry rhino so, so so we'll see right you know um there's uh we'll see where it goes yeah, and, and we'll probably circle back to it, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, there's, like, a bigger discussion with it, too, right? Like, outside of them having this reputation. And, again, this was over two years ago. Like, they might have really fixed up a lot of stuff. They may have. Um, so we're not trying to, like, just bring up old wounds and start the controversy. Stirring the pot, they might say. Mm. Uh, it was just newer news for us. Like, we yep. just... It was, we didn't know. So figured some other people might not know it or are not understanding why, like, this... Or maybe you want to talk about This story about it. is so big when it's like, well, yeah, everyone's cutting wages because, like, no one's making any money. And, like, it's a hard, it's hard world out there right now for businesses. So, like, yeah. I can get why maybe people are a little, like, shocked that it's such a big thing. But I do think it really does bring up that bigger problem of, uh, you know, like financial issues that are happening right now. Yeah. And you had a great story um, about talking to someone at volleyball that they're like, yeah, don't go because breweries just are all kind of like the same now oh my god that that was like a slap to the face yeah you know they're like it made like, me sad yeah they're like oh, the beer is kind of the same it's overpriced the atmosphere is the same blah, blah 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 and really what that points down to is what we have been saying over and over it's people want an experience they want something unique and and not trying to to push on people like it's it is a, a very dominant industry going in with a certain group of people. And, and it's not necessarily your fault that, like, it has kind of gotten washed and is kind of lacking some originality. 
uh, but this is why it's important to focus on diversitizing uh, and, and being more inclusive and having a unique experience and a unique community to come to because if it's not unique and a lot of them aren't that unique anymore, you're just not going to prevail. Like it's just and too it's competitive. it's not just about the metal. Yeah. And it's not just about the beer either. Exactly. Like there's exactly. a lot of good beer out there at this point. Like exactly. there just is. Like there's a lot of really good beer. So it just isn't just about the beer anymore. Yeah. You really have to do create that, that experience. Really and, and part of the way you're going to get there is with your employees and your employees have to be happy and they got to believe in your passion or... Honestly, I feel like you can tell the clientele that comes into a place where the the staff is not happy or they don't believe in the mission of what the place is doing. Like, it just changes. It really does. Uh, and those are places that I've gone into and I'm like, oh, I don't want to be here. Like, this mm -hmm. isn't great. Mm -hmm. um, you no wanna... matter if the beer is the best beer you can yeah. buy. I don't, I don't give a shit. Yeah. If the environment's off. Yeah. It's, it's just like being around people that make you a better person or they you know yeah, have the same it. beliefs you're not going to hang out with people that you know bring you down you hang around people that bring you up and make you a better person right second uh sorry third rule to life and top five things anyone has ever said to me never take advice from anyone you wouldn't trade places with yep and and that right there i don't care what i don't care if it's the best ip i've ever had in my life if the vibe is off and the people suck and you can just tell it's like walking into a beaten dog like I don't want to be around that. Yeah, I and mean, we had a, a great example of going into a brewery that we were doing a video tour of, and I stopped doing the tour. I stopped recording yeah. and was like, I'm yeah. not going to do it. Yeah, it's the, a bummer. And what I heard is actually, I think it was the owner was was the server, and he was a total dick. That's too bad. And I was like, I don't want to promote you. Like, you were awful. Like, you weren't fun at all. I'm not an idiot. I know how this space works. I know how to order beer. You don't need to treat me like shit. So guess what? Like, I'm not going to give you any shout out or help you out going on, and the, 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 but those things matter. And, and unfortunately, if your staff isn't happy and isn't believing in your mission and your vision, like, it's just not going to come off. Like, yeah. you can have the best vision you want, mm -hmm. but you got to have happy staff that also is wanting to push that. And that's all going to feed together into creating that experience. Yeah. And that's not to scare anyone off you either. There's a lot of great breweries out yeah. there and there's a lot of great experience. But keep your eye open for that. I mean, just like you're adjusting your palate to the nuances of different styles of beer, you're adjusting your eyes to the nuances of the environment of a brewery. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, I think and there's a lot to go with that. And too. it's also fine to like go to a brewery that like you just don't necessarily fit the vibe. That's fine too. Oh, like, yeah. That's why you got to have yeah. the variety, right? Like experience something new. Experience something new. I mean, easy easy hanging normally. fruit. Like if I go to a brewery and they're like all annoyed about ordering a flight, like when I probably just won't go back again because I like ordering flights, but like, all right, fine. Like that's not your thing, whatever. Like that's my thing, but I'm going to go find places that do fit with what I want. But that just shows like if you can offer something unique and offer an experience, yeah. focus on that. Like that needs to be a really high priority in, in moving forward and, you know, kind of surviving this wave right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So we got, I like it. Thank you. As we'll we'll get off things. of our, yeah. let us step so down from our soap boxes yeah. <laughs> and reveal our real height. I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm actually a lot taller than I like. <laughs> yeah. Then we're going <laughs> to... We're going to...